If you need to rely on the Mail Merge Wizard feature in Word, this is what you look like to your colleagues. I'm going to show you how to master the Mail Merge feature in Word so that you can customize and format professional business letters. There's also one Mail Merge feature that is a game changer when it comes to personalizing business letters. I'm going to show you how to use that feature and plenty more in this Mail Merge video. First thing we're going to do is insert a date field into the top of our document. A date field is not technically part of the Mail Merge process, but it does ensure that the main document always includes the current date. So just click at the top of your document, wherever that might be, put the insertion point there, then go to the insert tab. And then on the right of the insert tab, you're going to find this icon, the date and time one. We'll click that. It's going to say this is where we automatically update the time and date and choose any date format that works. This third one down is the most common one. And this is key. Make sure you've got the update automatically clicked or this is just all for nothing. So click that and then press OK. Wait 24 hours. Just like magic, whenever you open this document, it will update the date, which means we don't have to re-enter the date whenever we decide to send this letter off. To start the mail merge process, we're going to select a main document. We want to let Word know that we're using a letter. So that's going to open up different mail merge commands for us. To do that, we're going to have to click on the mailings tab and then click start mail merge drop arrow and then choose the type of document we want. And again, we want the letter one which is going to have different commands than something like an envelope. And now we can start choosing all of the people who are going to receive this letter. We're going to create a data source by clicking on the select recipients button and then we're going to click type a new list to open up a new address list dialog box. You'll notice in the dialog box that there's these field names and these field names will become placeholders in the main document. So you want to start thinking about what information do you absolutely need to include in this letter and what information can you do without. So if I want to add or delete some of these field names, I have to click Customize Columns. So we'll click that, and that's going to bring up a dialog box again where we can start deleting some of these. So let's say I don't need the work phone one or I don't need the country or region, that kind of thing. I can just select whatever field name and then click Delete. So company name, don't need. It's going to ask if I'm sure I want to delete, and I'll click Yes. And then work phone, don't need it. So we'll click Delete, and it'll, we'll just say Yes again. And one last thing that we'll delete, press delete, press yes again. Now you can also rename these. So no one really needs to, everyone uses their cell phone nowadays. So you could just call it phone. Um, even if they had a phone, home phone, you could just call it phone, whatever. Uh, you don't need to name it home phone. You can always rename something like that. You can also add. So we're going to do something unique to this one. Uh, we're going to add a new field name, Animagus. And we're going to add... And then you can also like reposition some of these field names. We're going to reposition that to the end by moving it down. And you can also add another field name that we want, um, house, which ha doesn't have to do with an actual house. I'll show you where this is going to go in the letter in just a minute. But that's how you can add field names and remove them and rename them and then press OK. Once we've got all the field names we want, we can start entering our first record in the row, our first recipient. Now, every time you type and you want to move to the next column, press tab, don't press space. That's not going to work. So just tab every time. And then when you get to the end of the row, if you press tab on the last field name, it's going to create a new row and then you can start entering your, your new recipient. I've got all the recipients here and you can see I've got all of the information. I'm ready to go and complete the source and save it. So I'll press OK and then you're going to save this data source somewhere. So give it a file name and we're going to save it. Now that we've got our data source saved, we can start adding our merge fields into our main document. First, you have to choose where you want to put some of these merge fields in your document. So I want to put the person's first and last name about three lines down from the date. And then I can click on the merge field drop arrow. Do not click the icon above the merge field drop arrow because that's going to take us back to our data source. We don't need that. We just need the drop arrow. And then we'll click first name. And then we'll put a space on our keyboard. And then I can go back to the drop arrow and choose the last name. That's going to be a last name merge field. And now we can start entering the merge field for the person's address. So we'll go one line down and then put address line one. We'll click on that. And then the next one on the next line will be the city. So we'll go to the merge field drop arrow again and just choose city. And then you have to use proper punctuation. So after the city, we'll put a comma and a space and then we can put the state or province. So that's what we'll do here. We'll choose the state or province, and then we can put the postal code or zip code right after. So that'll be in the merge field drop arrow again, zip code. But there's incorrect paragraph spacing, so we can fix that by highlighting this section, just the address section. Go back to the Homes tab, go to the line and spacing option drop arrow, and then choose remove spacing after paragraph. That's going to fix that for you. 
so that the address is properly formatted as a business letter, and then we can leave a space for the next part, which is the salutation. For this part of our letter, we'll just type in the word dear to address the person that we're sending this to, and then give it a space. And then again, we'll click the merge field drop arrow, and we'll click the person's first name. And then after the first name placeholder, just put a comma. You can also insert merge fields into the main part of the document or the letter. So to do that, just put your insertion point where you need this information to go and then click the merge field drop arrow. We're going to choose the house or the team that this person belongs to and make sure there's a space on either side of that placeholder. And then that'll tell us what team this client belongs to. Now I'm going to show you my favorite mail merge feature. It's a complete game changer and is the main reason you should not use the mail merge wizard. We're going to insert a mail merge rule in this part of our document, which is kind of cool to think about. We could create a completely different letter based on a certain condition. So that's what we're going to do in here. We're going to use a condition called an animagus. So can the person turn into an animal? And if they can, they get a different message than someone who can't. So that's what we want to do at the end of our document. We'll go to the mailings tab and click the rules drop arrow and then we'll click if then else which means if this condition is met so if the field name which is the animagus one that we want to look for the the field name that we created if they can turn into an animagus and the response to that is yes so it's equal to yes then they get one type of message so if the if it's yes, we type this, super fast typer. I have the world record for typing. And then if they don't meet that condition, then they get this message instead. So you get two different messages based on a rule, which is kind of cool to think about. In a business sense, you could have different letters based on different client interests and things like that. And then once you got the two messages, click OK. And then you see one of the messages pop up here based on whether the client's yes or no, they can turn into an animal. Only downside is that the formatting doesn't match, so I'll highlight the previous formatting, click the Format Painter button, and then just paint the formatting to our new message and make sure that it all matches the previous formatting. Now we'll preview the merge document, which is going to allow us one last time for any to check any missing spaces between the merge fields and the surrounding text. So just click Preview Results button here, and then once we do that, you should get a little preview of what each letter looks like. Here's our first one with the first client's address and information and the, pre the personal message and the team that they belong on and that kind of thing. And then if we go to the next one, so we'll press the forward button, that's gonna show the second client and with their address, third client, fourth client, and so on, as you keep clicking the forward button. And you can see that this person belongs to a different team, so it matches and we've got the right team for the right person. Everything looks great so far. So now we're finally ready to merge our main document with the data source and create a merge document. So now we're ready to merge the main document that we've been working on with the data source that we created. And to do that, click the finish and merge drop arrow. There's a few options here. The two main ones are at the top. You can either print the documents now or you can save it by clicking the edit individual documents at the top. That's what we're gonna do. That's gonna save this as a seven page document addressed to the seven clients and make sure that you select all if you want all of the pages I'm going to click OK and that's going to create a new seven page document so I'll press OK and we went from a main document to a merge document that is now called letters to and you probably want to give this a new name so I'll save it as something different maybe the um, and you can preview the letters here so we see all seven with the clients unique information in it so that's great. We've got all seven letters included in this new merged document. And now we can save this somewhere safe if you're not ready to print right away. So I'll just give this kind of a new name and then uh, save it in my documents folder. So when I'm done renaming it, I'll click save. And now we've got this new merged document that now has the seven clients in it. At this point, I need your help. There's got to be something in Microsoft Word that you struggle with. I would love it if you could let me know what that is in the comments of this video, and I'll try and help you solve it in a future video. Thanks for your help, and I look forward to hearing from you.